All right, so we're gonna program the intro three print. Uh, this is using a mill frame. Mill frame is a new block we haven't talked about yet. However, it is a one page screen or one page block, just like the mill circle was. So let's uh, go ahead first, let's start our new program. So I'm gonna go to program manager, new, conversational. I'm gonna create some stock geometry. We'll click on part setup, more, stock geometry. I'm gonna do a box. Yes, I wanna manually size it. And I'm gonna go with the dimensions on the print. So the X dimension is 4.75. The Y dimension is 3.87. and it is 1.5 inches thick. Again, the front left corner is zero, so I don't need to put anything in my reference positions. All right, so now we need to set up our tool. If we look on the tool list on the print, it says we're using a 9 16 end mill. So we're gonna click on the tool setup button, type in our tool number, let's do 101, select end mill, it's 9 16 so we can do a 9 divided by 16. Tool length won't matter. Let's set up some arbitrary speeds. 800 surface foot, 5 thousandths chip load, and a 3 flute end mill. That'll set our RPM and our feed rate. Now we're ready to start programming. So we're going to go to the review screen this time. I've been going to the input and then clicking on part programming. I wanna show you another way that you can insert data into your program, whether it's the first block or your adding blocks. So I'm gonna click on the review button here, the review icon. There's a review button on the control panel of the machine. You could do it the same way there. Highlight the block where I wanna insert above and click the insert block before F7 soft key. Takes me to my uh, programming blocks just like I would have been had I gone through input, part programming, it would take me to the same place. It just would have always put it at the bottom of the program. So I just wanted to show another alternate way to put uh, data into the program if you choose. All right, so we're going to do a mill frame. So we're going to select on milling and we're going to select frame this time instead of circle. Now, real quick, I'm going to go through and explain what it's asking for here. The first, the first two fields are gonna be X corner and Y corner, and then it wants to know the length in X and the length in Y of this frame. So I have a little graphic or a little uh, animation here to show that. So here is our mill frame block. You can see that the part zero is down here in the bottom left corner. I've got it as a green circle. And the two fields are asking for the X, Y corner. The X and Y corner, we're going to choose the one that most easily is determined by the values on the print or the dimensions on the print. In this case, it's gonna be the bottom left corner. So we're gonna put in the data for that corner, the X and Y data. Then it wants to know the X length and the Y length. From that, that uh, first corner that we um, determined in the first two fields, what is the length of the X side of the frame and what is the length of the Y side of the frame? Once the control has that information, it can then determine the intersecting corner opposite of the corner that you put in, thereby giving the full size of the frame. If we had chose the back right corner of this frame, and that's the dimensions we put in for our corner, then we would have had negative values for our X and our Y, and it still would have found that intersecting corner. So that's how we program a mill frame. So let's do it using the intro three dimensions on the print here. So we've inserted our mill frame block. We're gonna look at our print, and the bottom left corner is 0.25 in X, 0.38 in Y. The length of that uh, side of the frame is 4.25. Positive, because we're going from the bottom left corner to the right. 
we're going to have a positive y of 3.12. Now, once our z start, we'll do a positive value above the part to wrap it to 0.1. Our final depth of this frame is 0.5, so we'll do a negative 0.5. Now, the corner radiuses. You'll see that this particular frame has corner radiuses. It's a 0.31 typical, so all four corners have the same. So I'll put a 0.31 for our corner radius. However, if we click on the little tab here in the top part of the screen, you see that we can independently control each one of those corners by number, either as an arc or as a line with a length and an angle. So all four corners could have something different. In this case, they're all the same. So they all are going to be an arc of 0.31. I'll click on the geometry tab again to take me back where I was, and we'll continue on. Now our side start, like the circle, we could blend on and blend off of a circle at the zero degree position or three o'clock, which is the default, or on a frame, it always defaults to the bottom or six o'clock position on a frame. If I have a vice jaw or a clamp or something there that I can't blend on and off in that particular location, then I can pick one of the other sides, the top, the left, the right, whatever. We have no reason to change that here, so we're going to leave it at bottom. We're going to type in the tool 1, 0, 1, which is our 0.5, or 0.5625, our 9 sixteenths. We're going to do an outside frame. We do want to blend on and blend off, so we want to do the um, enable blend moves. I'm going a half inch deep, so I might want to peck this. I may not want to go that full depth all the way. So let's maybe do a quarter inch each peck. I don't have to put a negative value there because I started at a positive 0.1. I'm going to a negative 0.5, so the control knows the, the direction to move. It just needs to know the distance of each one of those pecks if you're going to use them. And I'm going to put a plunge feed of 10 inches a minute. Now when I go to draw this, I have a frame with the corners radius at 0.31, but just like we had an intro two, we didn't completely clean up on the corners here. So what I can do is the same two options are available here as in the mill circle we did in intro two. I could copy and paste this mill frame, make it a little bit larger or I could simply select my milling type and instead of doing outside where we're going to just blend onto that frame, cut all the way around and blend off, I can do a profile outside. I have the same mill or max offsets button that came up where I'm able to put a value. Let's say we put one inch in there and now you can see that we will start one inch away getting smaller as we go in, stepping over that percentage of the tool until we've completed this frame. Now you notice that it's, it is completing one full depth at a quarter inch, then it goes back and it does one full depth, all the pecs over for the final uh, quarter inch as well. Again, we selected profile outside. We started one inch away from the finish dimension, and that tool stepped over a percentage of 50% of the tool diameter each time to complete that, that part. So that's a mill frame outside using max offset.